Today we are going to talk about freelancing as a programmer and we will divide the process of starting to eight steps. But before we will start, remember to subscribe our channel, turn on the notifications and give us thumbs up! Hello everyone and welcome in the next video. Today we are going to talk a little bit and we are going to talk about freelancing. There are lots of people those days who would like to become a freelancer. Mostly we will cover the topic of programming freelancing because we know programming. And yeah, people want to be freelancers because they can work from everywhere. They can work from home, from different countries, different places. All they need is internet connection and computer. People want to be freelancers because they want to manage their own work, their tasks, they want to work with clients they like and the projects they like. And this is all really, really cool. But most of us, when decide to stay freelancer, face the question, how to start? And today I'm going to answer you for this question in eight simple points. So, are you curious? Okay, so from the beginning, if you would like to start freelancing as a programmer, you have to find your niche and get the skills. You need to know what kind of projects you would like to work with. And if you don't know, you have to keep in mind that when you are a freelancer, you need to do a little bit of everything. Like sometimes you need to do backend, frontend, some data science, some servers and stuff like this. So it's really useful if you have more knowledge than normally working in the company as a, for example, front-end developer. If you didn't find your niche and you don't know what kind of uh, programming you want to be specialized in, you can always check out what's the most popular, what's hot and where you can find the most projects to work on. Uh, currently, the most popular programming languages are JavaScript and it's pretty cool because you can write front-end and you can write back-end using it. Uh, of course, you need CSS and HTML, it's like a basics, but it's pretty easy, so you will learn it in really short time. Another very popular programming language is Python and it's also not very difficult. Uh, you can work on back-end with Python, you can work with machine learning, so you can do really, really cool stuff. Uh, if you would like to work with mobile development, then languages like Kotlin and Swift would be really, really useful. Uh, also, Golang is uh, the language that is pretty new, but uh, most of uh, companies and people want the projects to be built in this programming language, so you can be an expert in a technology that is pretty new, so you can be very rare on freelancing websites. And if you would like to get some of this knowledge, you can check out our courses at Duomly and also uh, you can check out our courses here on YouTube. I will put you the links in cards and in the description, so feel free to check them out. Let's go to the point two. When you did the point one, you have your niche, you have your skills, you need to build your portfolio. When you will be looking for the clients, then you probably need some projects to show them that you actually know how to code, that you've built something in the past and you did some projects for others, so you need a proper coding portfolio. Uh, depending on your specialization, your niche, uh, your coding portfolio should be suitable for the projects you are applying on. If you don't have any idea on the projects, then you can check out our videos about HTML, JavaScript and React.js. I will place you the links so you can create some of them. Also, you can put there things like your website and we'll talk about this uh, in a second. And the different projects that you are working on for other clients maybe or the things that you are doing when you are learning. 
you need a few like, I don't know, six, seven maybe, but different projects which you can share. Step number three. When you have skills, you have portfolio, you need some space in the internet where you can show yourself, introduce yourself, your works for the clients. So you need your website and it will be a part of your personal branding and we'll talk about this in a second. But let's stay with the website. You can do it in two ways. Uh, so you can practice your skills more and you can create a static website from scratch or you can use any of the popular CMS like WordPress and use any template, an existing template like Divi for example, and you can create your website like this. What freelancer's website should consist of? So for sure you need there some information about you, about who you are, what you are doing, what kind of projects, projects you are working with, what skills do you have. Maybe you can put there your picture to build some trust for the clients. And the second important thing is to put there your portfolio. So if you have a links to the existing code you, you wrote, put it there. Maybe some of the applications are hosted in the internet, so it's always a, a good way to show it somehow. And besides that, you need to have any way client can connect with you. So you need a contact form. And what else I would do? I would place the links for your social media if you are active and you are sharing some programming content. So it's a great place to put, put it there and build the trust in the client. And one more thing that should be on your website, if you have any, of course, you can put the reviews of your previous clients so others can see that you are a great person to work with. Let's go to the next step. When you have skills, when you have your coding portfolio, when you have your website, you need to build your personal brand a little bit. It's not like really required, but it's good to have. So great idea is to start writing blog about building software, about applications, about the niche you, you selected to work with. Uh, you can build a blog on your own platform, you can use any of the existing, you can create some uh, guest posts or popular blogs. And besides that, you can also use your social media profile to put there some information about coding, programming, some news. Also, you can uh, answer the questions on any forums, help people. And maybe besides that, you can also check out what other freelancers do wrong, so you don't have to do the same mistakes. And if you are interested about blog, I'll link the link to our other video when my friend is telling you how to set up your blog from scratch, so you can use it. Let's go to the next point. So we have most of our branding ready. We have our skills, we have our portfolio. What next? Next, we need to organize a way of work. Because, you know, freelancing is also about organizing your work because you need to have a way to cooperate with clients, to manage the project somehow. So you need to have a method for that. And there are tons of useful tools which you can use. So, for example, to manage the project, you can use tools like Trello or Asana. They are both free. Uh, I mean, no, they are not free, but they have free options, so you can use them. I will place the link in the description so you can check them out. Uh, you can also plan the project in a plain Google Calendar. It will be a little bit more difficult, but it's possible. Uh, next thing you need to do is something to connect with clients. So uh, if you are using any of the uh, portals like Freelancer or Upwork, then you have any space to write the messages. But if not, you can use something like Slack, for example. It's a great tool and also you can use it for free to some time. I will place the link so you can check it out. Uh, you need to take care about something for invoicing, something for payment. Uh, if you are cooperating with users from different parts of world, maybe PayPal is a great idea. 
Another thing you need to take care about uh, are agreements and there are tools for this as well. You can use something like HelloSign and I will also place the link for this one. So you need to plan the way you will be working from getting the client to finishing the project. We are closer. Point number six is about setting the profiles or the most popular freelancing portals. It will allow you to get clients fast, easy, and even if you don't have a lot of uh, reviews and a lot of jobs done. So uh, I will list here five the most popular ones. For sure you should have your profile on Freelancer, on Upwork, on Guru, on Fever, and on people per hour. And this one should be like the first where you are putting your profile because there are tons of orders every day and for sure we'll find something what you can do. Most of them also have invoicing done for you. So you are just getting money when you are fulfill your job and they allow you to get in touch with client easily so you don't need lots of this additional stuff at the beginning. Point seven, you can start getting some jobs. So when you have your profiles on freelancing portals, you can start taking part in the auctions. Uh, besides that, if you have some additional budget, you can make some advertisements with Facebook or Google. Uh, besides that, you can uh, maybe write a message on your social media if uh, you've grown a lot of followers, maybe some of them need any, any job done. And Try any way to find your first clients because it will be like the, the toughest part of your freelancing because the more clients you get, then they can refer you and your client list will, will grow. Now everything is ready. You are ready to freelance. You are growing your uh, customers list. And now the most important for you is to grow referrals and grow your customer base. Remember to make everything what's necessary to make a relationship with customer as good as possible. And remember to always deliver stuff when you promised. If it's not possible, then say about it earlier. Never break the trust of your client because client A can always tell client B that you are not the person worth to work and you really want to avoid it trust me congratulations we went through eight points to start freelancing i hope you can start and be really really successful according to the tips i gave you and fingers crossed for you if you are planning to become a freelancer if you like this video remember to give us thumbs up and leave us a comment your ways to start freelancing, maybe you would improve something. Uh, besides that, remember to subscribe to this channel for more freelancing tips and topics about freelancing, about career in IT and also programming courses. Turn on the notifications and if you like the video, share it with your friends to support us. I hope to see you on our channel again. Bye!